Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. It's a bombshell claim in an old Livingston County murder case, prosecutorial misconduct. It's a case that you're going to recognize. Former Judge Teresa Brennan served more than a year in jail in the Jerome Walter Kowalski murder trial. And that's right. Our Rod Maloney is live tonight with the very latest. Rod? Yeah, good evening, Sandra. You know, this filing here says it all. It says that Jerome Kowalski did not commit murder in the first place, that the police tilted the case against him, colluded with a tainted judge. But worse than that, it was the prosecution who knew all about this, should have stopped it, but did not. And that, they say, should mean no new murder trial for Jerome Kowalski. 75 year old Jerome Walter Kowalski is out of prison after serving some nine years behind bars. He's held on bond on a GPS tether. He's scheduled to face a new trial in the killing of his brother and sister in law back in 2008. But you'll recall that Judge Teresa Brennan oversaw that case. She ended up pleading guilty to felony perjury charges and going to prison because during the Kowalski trial, she had a close on again, off again romantic relationship with state police detective Sean Furlong. He elicited Kowalski's confession. Kowalski's defense now maintains in this filing that the prosecution not only knew about the Furlong Brennan relationship, but also that lead prosecutor Pam Moss had Furlong sit next to her at the prosecution table during Kowalski's trial as a way to keep Brennan's favor. Quote, alerted to the specific issue of judicial bias based on the close personal relationship between Detective Furlong and Judge Brennan before trial, the prosecution chose to intentionally cover it up. The prosecution team engaged in deliberate misconduct by concealing material facts bearing on the judge's bias before and during the trial in a calculated effort to improve their odds of winning and thereby avoid an acquittal. Having violated defendant's due process rights and having sent him to prison for years after an admittedly unfair trial, the state should not be permitted to try again. Allowing the state to do so would not deter similar misconduct in the future, end quote. Now they're going to be sending this case before the judge next Thursday to try and get this case thrown out. We'll have the update then. Back to you. And Rod, at this point, what are prosecutors saying about the filing? Well, that, that's an interesting point. I was able to get Pam Moss on the phone today. She referred me to the attorney general's office. The attorney general's office said they had no comment because they didn't conduct the case. They just picked up the case after all of this, but they're going to respond to this filing. They haven't written it yet. It's going to be put out in the next few days. When I get it, we'll certainly update it then as well. All right. Thank you, Rod. Devin. It's been two decades since a Pontiac woman lost her life in a Coney Island shooting. Police at the time said Vernita Cohen was not the target when she was shot and killed back in 2002. Well, now one woman is on a quest to reunite her family with a newly discovered photo album. Priya Mann joins us live with a story behind a really unusual discovery. Priya. Yeah, absolutely, Devin. And you know that discovery happened in the back seat of a vehicle that was just bought last week. And when Venus Wilcox saw this photo album, she knew it was a tribute to a young woman who was murdered 20 years ago. And now she's doing everything she can think of to try to get this photo album back to the victim's family. Somebody put a lot of love in this book. Venus Wilcox desperately wants to get this photo album back to Vernita Cohen's family, specifically Cohen's son. This right here is his mother. His pic the pictures of when she was pregnant with him, the pictures of her in her life, period, from a baby. The young mother was shot to death in 2002. The album has various newspaper clippings of the investigation. And that was my best friend, and she was an innocent bystander, and she didn't get killed. Local 4 covered the Coney Island shooting in Pontiac. Police say Vernita was the unintended target. This is a lot. It's, it's pr this one says, thank you, Jesus, for his sentencing. The last page of the album praises God with news the killer, Troy Manning, was sentenced to life. After all these years, Venus knows these photos are priceless. Because I lost a lot of pictures of my kids and I lost a lot and I don't want anybody else to lose what I've lost. The album was discovered last week in the backseat of a car that was bought by a family friend. After not finding anything online, Venus turned to Local 4 in the hopes she'll reach the Cohen family. I'm hoping that they get this book and they keep it safe. It stays somewhere where they can always get back to it.
Now, Venus has actually given local for this photo album. It'll be sitting on my desk. If you know the Cohen family or your Vernita son, please give us a call. That number 313 222 04 we want to make sure this photo album ends up with the family. Reporting live tonight, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Absolutely. We certainly hope so. All right, Priya. We are learning more tonight about a viral video showing a fight between a substitute teacher and a sixth grader. Monday's incident at Ypsilanti Middle School has been seen at least 21,000 times on Facebook. The district superintendent says the principal immediately called police. The mother of DeAndre Glaspie says her son has ADHD and school administrators are aware that he has behavioral issues. She doesn't condone her son's behavior, but she believes the substitute teacher she thinks went too far. She's a teacher. I don't feel like she should have abused my son like that. The principals, the social worker knows, and I don't believe that she contacted anyone at the school at that time. I believe that she just um, got fed up with the students and um, just acted, acted out of like pure rage. Police tell us they're investigating the incident and that teacher, by the way, has not been charged. Two girls have been released from the hospital after a pit bull attack on a playground near Bates Academy on Detroit's west side. That was breaking story yesterday afternoon. One of the dogs was captured and is going to remain in quarantine for 10 days as it's assessed for the risk of rabies. Pretty standard for stray dogs with unknown vaccine status. Detroit Animal Control, though, still working to track down that second dog that was involved in the attack. A Michigan woman is facing drug charges after a major fentanyl bust in Ohio. State troopers there say 29-year-old Portia Taylor from Detroit was pulled over. This was on April 22nd. It was for a traffic violation. A drug-sniffing dog alerted state police to her car, and they found 405 grams of fentanyl. Investigators say the drugs have a street value of roughly about $53,000. Taylor is now charged with trafficking and possession. If convicted, she's facing up to 22 years in prison. Not a bad way to head into the weekend because we had near record cold earlier in the week. So. It was really cold this yeah. week. Andrew, though, tracking a few showers for the weekend, but the forecast not all bad, right? Exactly. I mean, we've got sunshine for at least the first half of our weekend, and that is looking good. Those showers and storms, they affect our Sunday. No showers or thunderstorms affecting us now, though. We're looking at temperatures that are in the 50s, a little bit higher than yesterday, but every degree matters, right? We're looking at 53 for our friends in Mount Clemens, a little cooler there. A bit milder in Sandusky at 55 degrees. Ann Arbor checking in at 56, while it is 57 degrees over at Metro Airport. A few high thin clouds overhead, some mid-level clouds as well. Some sunshine peering through them, though. We're looking at 57 currently over at the airport. A little breezy with winds at around 15 miles per hour. Not only is it rain-free here in Detroit, but across the entire region. Scaling the skies with Storm Tracker 4, not a drop of rain in sight to spoil the evening. Perfect weather if you're going out, we're taking a stroll along the river, or maybe uh, enjoying some outdoors. There are some showers off to our west. Don't have to worry about these. These will stay to our west and eventually to our south. This line of shower and thunderstorm activity that is on the way for Sunday. I'll break down the timeline for you. I've got your seven day forecast in just minutes. All right, Andrew, first night of the NFL draft is in the books. Lions getting Quite a bit of praise today with their first two picks and their aggressive move to move into the second. Lots of praise. Bernie's live in Allen Park where the Lions just introduced their newest members of the franchise. Bernie. I think what really has happened here is they rolled the dice with that second pick on the first round. Everybody's ecstatic because this guy is a game changer. Talking about Jamison Williams, we've got highlights of the pair today. They're here. They were on display. They held a press conference. Aiden Hutchison and Jamison Williams of Alabama. Williams rehabbing a torn ACL, so that is a bit of a roll of the dice. Hutchison's just ready to get this thing started. I'm just going to come in here and, and do everything that I can, you know, and, and you know, I I'm not going to be too uh, focused on the outcome or focused on, you know, just uh, just anything like that. I'm going to be focused on the process and focused on, uh, you know, just the everyday grind and, and you know, just, uh, just getting better as a player to help the team. All right, that's Aiden Hutchinson, dreamt about playing for the Lions, gets his dream back. We are back later with more on rounds two and three. That's coming up tonight, starts at 7 o'clock. Kids, back to you. More coming up in sports. Yeah, hopefully it's exciting for Lions fans as uh, the last night was too. All right, Bernie. Thanks, Bernie. Still ahead, an Oakland County couple is set to go on a 1,000-mile bicycle adventure. Why they're making the long journey from Detroit to the Big Apple. But first, a food delivery app doing more than dropping groceries at your front door. How it's also inspiring families to eat healthier. That's next.